Hi guys, welcome back. Let's talk about the Ruger 1022, a gun that holds a special place in all our hearts. It is a gateway gun that works best to teach beginners the basics of shooting. The cheap cartridges, low recoil, and sturdy design make it stand out. Like most shooters, this was my first gun as well. I have used the gun at competitions, for hunting, and some days just to blow out the steam. And I'm sure most gun enthusiasts can relate to that. As for those who do not know much about 1022, it is a semi-automatic rifle produced by Ruger & Co, an American firearm manufacturer. The gun was released back in 1964 and is in production to date. This fact alone speaks for the quality and performance it offers. Back in 2010, when I got my hands on this gun, the cost was somewhere around $150 to $170, but now it can be purchased anywhere between $350 and $400. You can gauge the popularity of the Ruger 1022 from the fact that it has such an extensive aftermarket that anyone can build a gun without even using a single original Ruger 1022 component. It is estimated that about 7 million units of this gun have been sold since it started production. And if you have found this interesting, wait till we bring up more on the topic. So let's just get straight into it. Military Use When the military of any country decides to incorporate a weapon into its service, it is a huge deal. It does not just validate the performance of weapons, but also brings a lot of capital for the manufacturer that is then invested in research and development of future weapons. Most firearms giants have gotten there because of these military contracts, but militaries generally incorporate a weapon that is known for its firepower. But most people are surprised when they learn that the Ruger 1022 was also serviced by the military. Not by any military, but by the Israeli Defense Force. Now the question is, why would a military as belligerent as the IDF choose a weapon with subpar firepower? Well, it is this subpar firepower that led to its inclusion in IDF service. Let me explain. The Israeli Defense Force is not an ordinary military. The encounters it experiences are not like what many forces are familiar with. These forces experience mass protests, riots, and hooliganism very frequently, and using a powerful weapon during such a situation can be overkill. The IDF can hunt down a target with Ruger 1022 without doing much collateral. Furthermore, because the IDF version uses a presser, the gun makes very little noise, and it is hard to determine where the fire is coming from. This version also has a scope mounted on it to easily hit the target. Essentially, it makes the Ruger 1022 very practical for the IDF, but it certainly does not mean the gun is any less lethal, and it is precisely what has produced several controversies. In 2001, the gun was banned by the military advocate general, but when the situation got out of control in 2009, the gun was reintroduced and is in IDF service to date. Versions the Ruger 1022 is a highly customizable gun, and because of the aftermarket support, different gun distributors have made their own version. It is hard to keep count of the variations that are available in the market, but there are only 11 official variants of the gun, and only a few of them stand out. Magnum The first one is the 1022 Magnum, designed for enthusiasts who did not get the kick from standard 22 ammunition. It could chamber a more powerful 22 Magnum round. The size of these rounds is the same as standard 22 ammo, but it is packed with more firepower. However, the gun did not enjoy much popularity because the design of the gun was not good enough for such firepower. The lack of interest from the consumers led to its discontinuation in 2006 after just 9 years in the market. Takedown The second popular variant of the gun is the 1022 Takedown which was introduced in 2012. The unique thing in this variant was its ability to disassemble into two pieces. You can separate the barrel and buttstock for convenient storage. Some changes were also made in the finishing of the design to make the frame resemble stainless steel. Ruger ships the gun in a backpack style case with separate compartments for accessories, the gun, and the ammunition. The variant is under production to date, which means that a lot of people have enjoyed it but this premium touch comes at the expense of a higher price tag.
so be ready to spend a little more if you want to get your hands on this variant. SR-22 The third and most unique variant of the Ruger 1022 is the SR-22 rifle, which mimics the shape of the AR-15. While no changes were made to the design's core, the AR-15 styled shape was achieved by embedding the receiver in a chassis that resembled an AR-15. The caliber, magazines, safety, and charging handle were identical to the other variants. To date, this variant is also in production. 22 Charger Pistol Ruger also introduced a pistol based on the 1022 action in 2007. The pistol featured a black laminated woodstock, weaver scope, bipod, and a 10-inch matte blued barrel. Its total length was around 20 inches, which is comparable to most large-sized handguns. Plus, the bipod also made shooting from the bench or table much more effortless. You could attach a bipod with a sling swivel on the fore end of the stock and remove it when it was not needed. Because of regulatory changes that made it illegal for pistols to have magazines outside the grip, the sales dived down, and consequently, Ruger decided to stop its production in 2014 before reintroducing it in 2015 with some design changes to comply with new regulations. Other variants of the gun include Tactical, Competition, Compact, Sporter, Target, Target Light, Anniversary Rifle, Collector Series, and VLEH Target Tactical Rifle. Most Modifiable Weapon Ruger's 1022 popularity has allowed several companies to cash in by producing aftermarket accessories. Every component of this gun can be replaced and there are plenty of options when it comes to replacement. You can change the stock, magazines, and even barrels. It is one of the primary reasons for its success. Enthusiasts can even order custom components with different designs to make the rifle more appealing. Furthermore, it does not require a professional hand to replace these components. The internet is filled with tutorials that allow even novices to modify their gun. In addition to gun stores, some companies have also started offering customized variants of Ruger 1022. ACW Ultra 2 and AT1020 QD are the two most famous of them. The AWC Ultra 2 is offered by AWC SysTech and comes with a suppressed and shortened barrel. Suppressor is attached to a stainless barrel which is constructed from 300 series stainless steel. With a 1 inch diameter, it looks like a bull barrel, making it even more good looking. AT1020QD is another short barrel design which is made by Arms Tech Limited. It reduces the barrel down to 6 inches and includes a folding stock. Furthermore, the barrel is tailored to mount with a QD223 suppressor, another offering of the same company. Because of the shortened barrel, the weight of this variant is slightly less than the standard model and it is also considered a Title II weapon in the United States. Firearms in this category require federal firearm license. Owners have to pay Class 3 special occupation tax as well. William Ruger The Ruger 1022 has brought millions in revenue to the firearm manufacturer, but it had very humble beginnings. William Ruger, the inventor of Ruger 1022, started his shop in a room that he converted into a machine shop. He designed his first ever machine gun in 1938, which was immediately serviced by the U.S. military. And the capital he received from this transaction allowed him to invest in research and development to finally deliver a masterpiece known as the Ruger 1022. That is it for this video. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about the gun that sparked your interest in firearms. Stay connected with us to get updates on new weapons and the regulatory changes around them. We will see you at the next one.